The Sony a7 III is a camera that changed the hybrid mirrorless camera market forever. It brought 4K video, 24 megapixel stills, professional features like dual card slots and long battery life, and most of all, a full frame backside illuminated image sensor. Oh, and it cost $2,000, which is a lot of money, but it is also a lot of camera for that money, especially in 2018. Now, two years later in 2020, we have a whole new full frame mirrorless market with Canon, Nikon, and Panasonic all diving into the realm of hybrid stills and video cameras. Canon has an 8K RAW camera. Yes, we are talking about the same Canon. Nikon has a 4K RAW camera. I know, even Nikon got into the video game. And Panasonic has a 6K Netflix approved camera. Now Sony, after five years, has come out with a successor to the successful a7S II, a video-centric camera with superb low-light performance and dynamic range, and now at up to 4K with 120 frames per second in 10-bit 422 internal or 16-bit RAW over HDMI, with options like All Intra, H.265, and up to 600 megabits per second. It's a 4K beast, with other cameras bridging the gap between 4K and even higher resolutions. Let's talk about Sony's path into the upper reaches of our perception of quality. I'm talking higher resolutions. Oh, and the upper reaches of our wallets, because these things come at a cost. I believe the next camera to add higher resolutions in the Sony lineup to video will be the Sony a7 IV. Let's talk about it. Okay, so the image you are seeing right now is shot on the Sony a7 III, and if you ask me, it looks pretty darn good. Yes, it is only 8-bit. Yes, it is only 100 megabits per second. But also, yes, it is a beautiful, sharp, 6K downsampled image with great dynamic range and noise performance on a full-frame backside illuminated sensor. This in combination with the 24 megapixel still resolution, great battery life, dual card slots, and that price of only $2,000 made this camera what it is today. Still, a very good buy in 2020. However, I believe an A7 IV is on the way, and I want to talk about it. Let's start with the big ones for me. But just keep in mind, I'm going to be getting into the little things, those little nuances that only a Sony A7 III user would know. So let's start with video. It needs to have 4K at 60 frames per second. If it uses the full width of the sensor, that would be best, but a small crop, would be acceptable so long as it is not a Super 35 crop or anything crazy like that. Moving forward, 10-bit color is a must as well. May it be external, that's okay so long as it has it. Finally, some sort of higher bit rate to accommodate these higher frame rates and color depths would be necessary. May it be H.265 or some other sort. We need some higher bit rates to retain this extra detail. The reason these are big should be pretty self-explanatory, but here's why. The Canon EOS R, R5, R6, the Nikon Z6 and the Z7, the Panasonic S1, S1H, and S1R. They all offer at least 10-bit externally, and they are all heading in the direction of offering full frame 4K60, if not offering it. It's becoming the new standard offering for 4K video in full frame mirrorless. So if Sony wants to make a camera that will stand the test of time, they need to make it offer these minimum specifications. 4K 60p is lots for most people and really gives users the opportunity to shoot slow motion without sacrificing quality. Sony needs to offer 10-bit 4K 60 to retain the Sony A7 line spot in their lineup and the camera industry in general. Next up is stills. And here, not much needs to change for 2020. The a7 III is a great stills camera with great options when it comes to burst rates of 10 frames per second, silent shooting, fast eye autofocus for humans, and now with the update animals, uncompressed raw, 24 megapixel resolution, which despite some people's opinion, is pretty much enough for anything that doesn't involve blowing up the image past, well, 200%. If your framing is at least close in camera, this resolution should be sufficient for pretty much all situations. I think the biggest thing regarding stills with this camera isn't going to be an upgrade to the photo specifications. Maybe a slight resolution bump would be acceptable just to make those who doubt 24 megapixels happy, but not a large one as we do not want to sacrifice on low light or dynamic range by having smaller photons 
I got sidetracked, but my point is a higher resolution viewfinder would be very much appreciated for stills as in general, it isn't bad, but a single look at a higher resolution EVF found in very similar offerings from other companies will make you drool a little if you've been shooting stills using the EVF on the a7 III. In regard to the viewfinder, higher resolution rear display would be great too, as although it's leaps and bounds better than its predecessor, which was very dim and you could hardly see it, it still isn't that great. We know the a7 line keeps price down and gives the necessities, but a slight bump to both the EVF and screen quality would be a welcome surprise. Speaking of the display, a fully articulating display is necessary. Everyone has one now. Sony would be dumb to not bring it into their A7 line. End of story. Now, time for the little nuances, some of which have been addressed in the A7S III, which I made a video about here. Anyways, number one, dual card slots with UHS-2. Oh, and put them in the right order for one on top and two on the bottom. I'm still so confused every time I put my memory cards in or out. Number two, the ability to set custom white balances in custom shooting modes and a better photo video switch option. Something like the X-T4's ingenious quick switch to switch settings between photo and video seamlessly and quickly. Number three, IAF in video mode. This is a basically all other Sony cameras that are newer have this, so it's gonna be in there. It's just make sure it's in there. Number four, more options for AF speed and tracking. As right now, there just isn't a large enough variety for smooth focus racking for all situations. Number five, different port covers. Please, the Sony a7 III's are so annoying. Number six, touchscreen menu navigation and an updated menu so people will stop picking on Sony's menus. Number seven, quick charge through USB to at least sustain power while being charged and recording at the same time rather than slowly draining while being charged as it is now. Number eight, better recording button placement if possible without making the camera bigger or sacrificing on quick function buttons. Number nine, recording limits removed. We do not want this 30 minute record limit. If there's a slight record limit of maybe 20 to 30 minutes on 4K 60, that's okay. But for 4K 24 to 30, please, no record limits. Number 10, full width 4K at 30 frames per second. So no crop on that. Number 11, retain face and IAF while using HDMI and or proxy recording. Number 12, transparent audio level menu while recording like the A7S III. Number 12, five gigahertz photo and video transfer. Like the Canon, this would be so easy, you would never have to take out your SD card slot, at least for photos and possibly for videos, depending on how fast they can make it. Number 14, compressed photo format like HEIF for saving space and for shooting RAW plus J JPEG to increase that memory and buffer. And finally, number 15, improved rolling shutter. I don't want to look like Jello. With that being said, I wanna talk about one more thing and that is higher resolutions in video mode. I believe Sony will have some tricks up their sleeves and will add 6K recording to the Sony a7 IV. Don't quote me on that. These are just my thoughts and opinions, but I do believe they will be adding it. May it be limited to 24p or even 30p with a crop, possibly, but I do believe they will be adding the option. The reason behind this is like I mentioned in the Sony a7S III video here, that camera tops out at 4K and while other cameras are coming out with six or even 8K options, Sony isn't going to be left behind because like I said in this video here, competition pushes the whole market forward. The only other option would be for Sony to release an A7R5 boasting 8K or higher, but I see that as unlikely as that is their stills oriented camera. And finally, the even less likely option would be for a new, less budget oriented kind of Sony A7 style camera that can prioritize the best specs for photo and video shooters alike in a new series of full frame with high resolution video from a great sensor resolution, may it be quad bear or just a normal resolution sensor with higher stills megapixels to match. My thinking, the easiest and hottest spot for them to make a higher resolution mirrorless is the Sony A7 IV. With the supreme success of the a7 III, the a7 IV has a spot to fill and lots of buyers awaiting its release. By making it their introduction into higher resolution video with stills performance to match, 4K up to 60p rather than 120p to differentiate from the a7S III, and a generally affordable price tag somewhere under 3K or even better, around $2,500, 
I think the Sony a7 IV would sell like hotcakes. Just hopefully they can cool it so it won't be one. So yeah, lots of improvements to be made on an already fantastic camera. Let me know down below what you guys want to see in the Sony a7 IV. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, take care, and have a great day everyone.